Hey there, it's Steve from Serious Keto, and this, I hope, will be my final resistant starch video on the topic of rice. This is actually my fourth video on the topic of resistant starch. And I'm not doing it because I love rice or want to eat potatoes or pasta necessarily again, although pasta wouldn't be bad. I'm doing it because I really want to find out. I'm genuinely curious, is there a way to cook some of these starches in a way that it doesn't impact my blood glucose? Additionally, it's important for me to understand if I prepare them in such a way that it turns them into a resistant starch, do they still cause me inflammation? Because if they do, then, you know, not interested. I am not, through these videos, trying to prove that somehow rice becomes keto or potatoes become keto. But what I do want to do is be the human guinea pig, the N equals one, to determine if something like this, this rice, could be consumed by someone who's trying to control their blood glucose. Now, when I did the last rice video, I got all kinds of requests and suggestions and people telling me what I did wrong. In terms of requests, I got every rice request you can imagine. Do brown rice, do wild rice, do jasmine rice, do minute rice. I've also had people argue whether or not reheating the rice after cooling it and making it supposedly resistant somehow loses the resistant starch. Finally, I had a number of people talk about the preparation method and telling me that I should cook the rice with coconut oil. And upon doing some internet research, I found that the College of Clinical Sciences in Sri Lanka actually used this particular method that a number of people recommended to me by cooking the rice along with coconut oil and creating a resistant starch. So that is the method I'm going to use. It was also recommended to me that I soak my rice overnight to sprout it. I don't know if that's gonna do anything. I know for a lot of grains, sprouting them is supposed to improve digestibility, but I'm gonna do that. I don't think it's gonna affect the whole resistant starch thing. Now in this study done by the Sri Lankan researchers, they tested 38 different varieties of rice and found that the effect was the same on all of them. So I don't know that I need to test 38 different types of rice. I'm just gonna do basmati rice because that's what we have in the house. So I'll test the one type of rice and if it works, then I guess we can trust the folks in Sri Lanka that it works on the other 37. On the topic of does reheating the rice after cooling it and making it resistant somehow lose the resistant starch element, the scientists in Sri Lanka said no, reheating does not make a difference. Still, I'm going to test this rice four different ways. First, cooked and eaten directly out of a rice cooker. Now I did rinse the rice repeatedly. It was probably five or six rinses to get the water to run mostly clear. So I'll be eating it that way. Then I will prepare the rice in the resistant starch manner. So again, I'll rinse it. I will cook it with coconut oil. I will chill it for at least 12 hours, and then I will eat it both reheated and still cold. So we can test to see if there's a difference between reheated and still cold. Finally, I will do one more batch of rice that is cooked just plain in the rice cooker, but then I will add fat after the fact and see if it's the fat that has an impact on blunting the glucose response or if it's the cooking method. Now, the only way I could see myself doing another rice video in the future is if this experiment works and if I get a very low response blood glucose wise, I might wanna see if I can do a video on sushi rice and see if there's a way to make a low carb sushi. But I'm not gonna know that until we've done a few days worth of testing. Based on what I looked up on the internet, the serving size for rice is one cup of cooked rice. Now this is probably more than I would eat if I were having any sort of Chinese or Indian food, but we'll go with one cup. I have a continuous glucose monitor installed in my arm here. So we're gonna take a reading to see where we are for starters. And we are at 84. And I will snap a picture of this to mark the start of this experiment using the Levels software. And if you're interested, I will put a link down below in the description on the Levels program, their whole continuous glucose monitor program. Really pretty slick, but not for everybody. 
I also took a ketone reading using the Keto Mojo this morning. You can see that right here. And I was at 8.8. So here we go, one cup of rice. And I will not make you watch me eat this entire bowl of rice. All right, this is the last little bit right here. You can see we're empty. And when I come back, we will see over the course of two hours how this impacted my blood glucose. How high did it go up and did it come back down? It has been about three hours since I finished my bowl of rice. And the results are not especially surprising to me. You can see from the level software here that I went up to 127. Now, I'm not sure how that calculates as a 39 point change. To me, the math would say like 43 points, 84 to 127. Anyhow, it's definitely a spike, which is not a big surprise. What was a surprise to me was how long it took me to get back under 100. As you can see here, it took me three hours to get back under 100. And I just checked it again a minute ago and I was back to 101. So this has been a fairly sustained increase in blood glucose. Also, just because I'm sure someone will ask, what kind of reading am I getting on the Keto Mojo if I'm sitting right about 100 on the continuous glucose monitor? 105. So pretty consistent results between the Keto Mojo and the continuous glucose monitor. But like I said, that doesn't especially surprise me. The one thing that bothers me, and I guess probably also shouldn't surprise me, is I'm already feeling inflammation. Started at about the two hour mark in my left knee and now I'm starting to feel it in my right knee. And this is a problem that I suffered from for years before going keto. So this uh, kind of bums me out that I've, I've now got this pain in my knees. Hopefully it clears up rapidly. And then also hopefully once we do the resistant starch experiments, I'm hoping that I'm not in for a week of misery because the next place it's probably gonna wind up is gonna be my knuckles and elbows. Let's do a quick test of my blood ketones here. We are down to 0.4. So we will check them again tomorrow morning and that will make me decide if I need to take a day off from this experiment or if we want to continue with the resistance starch. So we are back on day two and I've decided to switch up the order a little bit. I'm going to do the non-special preparation method, so just straight rice cooker method, but with the addition of fat. I'm going to add about a tablespoon of butter a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, and see what the impact of that is. I tested my ketones this morning, and you can see, actually doing better. I'm at 0.9, so that's good. I am in a fasted state. Let's see what my blood glucose looks like. 86, and it's been holding stable here for the last couple of hours, so this is a pretty good baseline. So here's my rice, tablespoon of butter. Couple grinds of pepper. A little pink Himalayan salt. While that butter melts, I'm going to snap a pic with the level software to mark the beginning of the tracking of this meal. Here we go. Rice with some butter in any kind of seasoning is so much better than plain rice. That may be the most Captain Obvious statement you, you'll hear all day, but I couldn't help myself. And final bite. I ate that at about twice the speed as yesterday's rice. That butter, mmm, good stuff. But now I will be back in two or three hours. It all depends on what the size and length of the blood glucose bump or spike is. So we'll see you soon. It's been two hours since I finished the buttered rice. Let's take a reading with the continuous glucose monitor. We are at 96, so it took two hours for the buttered rice to get us back under 100, whereas the plain rice, it took us about three hours. Let's take a quick ketone reading with the Keto Mojo. Point 
0.8. So very little impact, if any, probably within the margin of error on the ketones. Now, if we look at the levels score for the buttered rice, it appears initially to be essentially the same as it was for the regular rice. The glucose peak, pretty close. Glucose change, pretty much the same. Time over target also seems to be about the same. But here's the difference. You can see that the glucose on the buttered rice is already declining, whereas it was still going upward on the plain rice. I'll, uh, hang on, I'll pull this up. Here, you can see the two overlapping. So the white is the buttered rice. You can see that that peaked a lot faster. And maybe that's just because I was able to eat it faster because of the butter. I don't know, it went down a lot faster, it seemed like. But then it also came down a lot more quickly. Whereas you can see at the two hour mark and the green, which is the plain rice, we're still trending in an upward direction. So this kind of aligns with what we've seen in my previous resistant starch videos, which is the inclusion of fat either blunts the intensity of the spike, like how high it goes, or the duration, or perhaps even both. Now in the next two segments, we will be looking at the supposedly resistant rice. We will try out the method that I talked about in the article linked down below. We will try it out both cold and hot. Now I do need to soak the rice overnight to sprout it. I'm gonna throw that into the mix as well, and then cook it and then chill it another night. So when you see me again, my hair will be two days longer. In just a moment, I will be eating the supposedly resistant rice. I made this in my Instant Pot. One cup of rice, one cup of water, to which I added two tablespoons of coconut oil, and then just cooked it like regular. I then moved it to an airtight container and refrigerated it overnight. My ketones this morning, a little bit on the low side at 0.5, no big deal though. And then just to kind of show you how close I consistently find the results are on my continuous glucose monitor versus my Keto Mojo, you can see here I was at 82 on the continuous glucose monitor and 86 on the Keto Mojo. I'll take one more reading from the continuous glucose monitor. And we are at 81 and have been holding pretty steady since uh, about five this morning. So I decided that I would eat the cold rice first. My rationale is that if it doesn't work cold, it's probably not gonna work warm with the whole you know blood glucose thing that we're trying to achieve here or you know trying to test here. If it turns out that my blood glucose spikes after eating the cold rice, I think that's the end of this video and it's the end of my experiments with rice. If, however, it doesn't spike, then we'll try it reheated in another day or two. This is considerably more dry, even than the cooked rice that was just plain. Overnight in the fridge, did nothing to make this taste better. And this is gonna be a little bit of a jaw workout here, I suspect. All right, final bite. Seriously, that was a lot of chewing. I'm not gonna pretend like I enjoyed that at all. Also, I forgot to take a picture with the level software to mark the start of this little experiment, but I did manually enter it. So we'll still be able to look at the data and compare it to the other types of rice later. So if you're concerned that you didn't see me take a picture, don't worry about it. It's still entered into my phone. And uh, we'll be back in maybe two hours, maybe three hours. We'll see how my blood glucose responds. All right, it has been a little over two hours. Check out the results on our cold resistant rice right over here. That is a score, that one for a score from the level software is the worst possible score a food item can get. My blood glucose went up almost 100 points from eating that rice. And let's see where we're at right now. So on the bright side, made quite a recovery there, 87. Now just for grins, I'll test my blood ketones as well. 0.2, so not a good uh, outcome, I would say, for this little experiment here. 
I think I can safely say at this point that trying to create resistant starch rice that does not have an impact on blood glucose is a fail. I've seen now multiple times that the whole trying to create a resistant starch process doesn't really have much of an impact. I mean, it was awful here on this rice. That kind of a blood glucose spike is just insane. But I've also seen in my previous videos that adding fat seems to blunt that response. Ultimately though, I'm done on this rice experiment. There's really no need for me, in my opinion, to test any other type of rice, given that these researchers said that they did 38 different types of rice. So sushi rice, not gonna happen. Brown rice, not gonna happen. None of that. I'm, uh, I'm done. And really, I'm not hugely disappointed. After being on keto for almost two years, I have no cravings for rice. I'm completely fine eating riced cauliflower. It's time to move on, I guess. I will probably do another video or two in this series. I wanna look at pasta because there was a BBC special, which when I do that video, I will link to that video as well, where they attempted a resistant starch method, similar to what we just did here on pasta. But I think after I do another video or two, probably at a pace of one a month, that's gonna be it for this series because just the, the overwhelming evidence points to the fact that resistant starch is not a thing, at least for me. So I hope that this video was useful or maybe even a tiny bit entertaining. If so, please click that like button. If you're not a subscriber already, hit that subscribe button. Just make sure to hit the bell to turn on all notifications. Thanks for watching.